Tonight on KTVO News at 6.30, Rag Ride will be rolling into the heartland in a few days. Tips for drivers to keep bicyclists safe. Plus, a man found guilty of first-degree murder finds out his sentence. Southeast Iowa's own evening news starts now. This is Southeast Iowa's own KTVO, CBS 3.2 News at 6.30. Good evening, I'm Alex Wilson. New tonight, two residents have been found shot to death at a Heartland home. Today, the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office responded to 225 North Main Street in Packwood. Deputies found two unresponsive adults in the home suffering from apparent gunshot wounds. One person died at the scene while the other died on the helicopter on the way to Iowa City. A handgun was also located inside the residence. Deputies are working with the Iowa DCI to determine the circumstances of these deaths. At this time, there is no indication that the public is in any danger. No further information is available at this time. A Southeast Iowa man convicted of murder was sentenced this afternoon to life in prison without parole. 26-year-old Ricky Kiesling of Eldon was arrested in 2014 for the murder of Eldon bait shop owner Daryl Teeter. In May, jurors found Kiesling guilty of first-degree murder and first-degree burglary. Earlier this month, Kiesling's request for a new trial was denied. Today, he appeared in Wapolo County Court for his sentencing. He was sentenced to life for the murder charge and 25 years for burglary. Kiesling's attorney asked that the sentence on each conviction run concurrently. My client is a very young man. He has very minimal criminal history, probably almost none to speak of uh, prior to his arrest in this case. The judge ruled that Kiesling would serve both sentences at the same time. The court did not hear statements from Teeter's family. Several people came to court dressed in t-shirts that read, Justice for Ricky Kiesling. And in the same courtroom, just an hour after Kiesling, an Ottumwa teen pleaded guilty to sexual abuse this afternoon. 19-year-old Craig and Grooms faces up to 10 years in prison for engaging in sexual acts with a 1-year-old. In 2014, Grooms, who was 17 at the time, was charged with second-degree sexual abuse. The charge stemmed from a videotape that showed Grooms sexually assaulting the child. In court, Grooms admitted to engaging in lascivious acts with the child. Grooms' sentencing is scheduled for September 12th. Until then, Grooms will be released on pretrial supervision. He asked to stay with his mother. Before today's plea, Grooms had been in custody on a $100,000 cash-only bond. Since his arrest, Grooms has undergone more than one mental health evaluation. New tonight, lawyers from a Florida man whose involvement with an Ottumwa girl that triggered a nationwide Amber Alert wants more time to make a deal. 19-year-old Kevin Ariel Toyla Ramirez is facing three federal counts, including travel with intent to engage in illicit conduct and child pornography. Ramirez is also known as Kevin Rechsteiner. The motion requests that the judge grant a continuance so that settlement talks can continue. July 25th was the original deadline for the parties to come to a deal. Prosecutors didn't resist the motion. The charges stem from an October 23rd, 2015 incident. That's when Ottumwa police received a report about a missing 13-year-old Ottumwa girl. The next day, police received information that she was in the company of Ramirez. An Amber Alert was then issued. Ramirez's vehicle was located in Ackworth, Georgia. Officers initiated a traffic stop and found the girl inside the vehicle. Ragbri is meant to be a fun-filled event for the heartland, but it can be dangerous if motorists aren't paying attention. Bicyclists started the seven-day ride yesterday. Among them was a Florida man who was killed near Glenwood, Iowa, after being hit from behind by a pickup truck. To avoid future accidents, a Wapolo County Sheriff Chief Deputy Don Phillips reminds Atumwins to travel with caution. What I would encourage motorists is to try to find alternative routes in their traveling to and from work or to their activities. Um, cyclists are instructed to stay far to the right. You know, take your time in traveling. Don't be in a big hurry. And I think uh, everybody will have a good time at uh, Ragbri here in Atumwa. Bicyclists are scheduled to arrive in Atumwa Thursday and depart Friday morning. For a list of road closures, go to KTVO.com and find the link posted with this story. Former Iowa State Legislator Patty Judge, a Democrat from Albia, is running for a seat on the United States Senate. Her opponent, Republican Chuck Grassley. 
Judge Rosanna Tumway yesterday to talk to KTVO about the state of the race against incumbent Senator Grassley. She said she knows it will be difficult taking down a senator who has held his position for 36 years. The 82-year-old Grassley hasn't lost a race and has been in the Senate since 1980. She described Grassley as one of the most powerful people in the Republican Party, but says she's not afraid. Judge believes that Grassley doesn't have the right to obstruct the process of choosing a Supreme Court judge. The links she said between Senator Grassley and Donald Trump will help her in the race. If, if his views on issues are the same as Donald Trump's, well, so be it. I believe that Donald Trump is wrong on almost every count and that there is no place in our Iowa or our United States for the bigotry and hatred that we heard displayed last week in the Republican convention. Judge has been endorsed by President Obama and hopes he will campaign with her. Making schools safer, that's the goal behind the new pilot program called WISE. The program puts a private Wi-Fi network specifically for public safety agencies and first responders at schools. Governor Terry Brand said joined Department of Public Safety Commissioner Roxanne Ryan to introduce the project this morning. Ryan says this network of first responders will have quicker access to surveillance systems and gather information from schools from their cars. In an active shooter situation, having access to those surveillance cameras is extremely important. Uh, it's going to be able to tell us where the individual is and uh, and so for the first responders, if they are able to tell where the danger is, they can stay safer and they can keep the children safer as well. Right now, only three schools will have the pilot system. This comes at no cost. Branstead and Ryan say after further review, they hope to expand the project to other schools. Coming up next, it's day one of the Democratic National Convention. Find out what is causing it to start off a little rocky.